Hi folks, this is all the fruit. And first a quick disclaimer, you are not gonna see 200 species of fruit in this video. It would have cost me two or three days of foraging to get them together and I did not feel like biking around for two or three days in the German winter, despite the fact that it's quite a mild one. Well, maybe you are wondering right now, I was actually supposed to go foraging in the steaming jungles of Malaysia, but it's quite obvious that I'm still in Germany. My flight got delayed by nine days because of passport problems, and so I decided in one of the last days to check out what I can find in Germany right now. And as I said, and I'm sticking to my claim, I can, without any trouble, forage over 400 species, not varieties, but species of fruit in such a mild winter in Heidelberg, Germany. Don't know how many I have here, maybe 50 or 60. It took me like one and a half hours to forage them. So, yeah. Well, fruit foraging in Germany in winter. January is actually not a good time for fruit foraging. January and February and well into March are actually not only the worst time for fruit foraging, but also the worst time for fruit in the supermarkets. As you can see, we have quite a mild day now, but until two days ago, it was quite cold. The winter is comparatively mild, but not as mild as last winter, which was almost frost free. We had like minus four and once even minus seven degrees around here. And this is a very mild part of Germany. And still after this frost, there is a lot of fruit. This is unusual. In a normal year, you wouldn't, you would be pretty hard pressed to find 200 species of fruit to forage in Germany in January. It's not a time of foraging for fruit. It's a time where you forage for bulbs, tubers, roots, rhizomes maybe a couple dried up seeds and because it's so mild you can already forage for all the spring greens we have a lot of leeks and onions coming out uh, carrot greens lots of brassicaceae lots of asteraceae well basically yeah most of the spring greens are there so this is a time in which you basically forage for roots and tubers and also because it's a mild winter for spring greens but because it's a pretty mild winter as I said, you can get up to 200 species. Look, even stuff like the very, 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 very frost sensitive, well, very frost sensitive for our climate, Zolanum villosum or Zolanum luteum is still intact. Well, as I said, those are not 200 fruit species. This is just a quick selection, a quick hint to what you can get in a very short time without... Um, actually breaking a sweat if i had foraged for two or three days i would have gotten maybe 200 edible fruit species here i have also a couple non-edible ones let's see what we can find and maybe let's try to move a couple of the fruit we already cover into this bag here so that there is a little bit of order well first the flowering quince a great fruit Mm, very aromatic, although this one doesn't seem to be one of the very aromatic varieties. Well, it's very sour. It's very aromatic. It's pretty tough, so it can last in a mild winter well into spring. You can eat it out of hand. Mm, nice and ripe. The sourness might be quite strong, but it's a good sourness. But you can also make it into marmalades and jellies and whatever. Well, apples. Yeah, it's a mild winter, so if it stays like this, the apples will last well into spring. This is some Malus Domestica. This is some ornamental apple, which even the official uh, tree guide of the campus calls just ornamental apple. Here is some, where is it? Some small Malus Pacata from Asia really beautiful little apples a little bit tart and sour but quite nice to nibble in the cold weather here's a more malus pacata and here the smallest of them all a really tiny apple with tiny yellow apples most people don't even believe me that this is an apple but this is a true malus well 
totally different group, the conifers. This is a cone of Pinus nigra, and all pine seeds are edible. Of course, we mostly use big pine seeds like Pinus domestica or uh, Pinus sibirica or Pinus zembra. Mm, even the small ones are edible and tasty. They are just small. I mean, you have to calculate how many calories you will expense to collect one of those teeny tiny seeds. Well, some other dried up fruit with seeds which are, which are claimed to be edible. Mm. Maples. Well, people claim that a lot of parts of a maple are edible, including the fruit. This is uh, Aza Campestre, by the way. However, whenever I've tried them, they are horrible. I wouldn't really consider them edible. Not even as a survival food because, yeah, if you cannot get it down because it's horribly bitter, it will not <coughs> really aid you in your survival. <coughs> Amaranthus. Amaranth seeds are edible. Here, the small black seeds. I mean, all our feral species have quite lit, quite small seeds and they are not really considered a valuable food. But I guess if you find a lot of big plants, you can manage to trash out like one or two handfuls of high caloric seeds. Similar thing goes for Xenopodium. Those are relatives of quinoa. Here you can see the uh, the blackish uh, opaque seeds, they are not as shiny as the amaranth seeds, but just as edible. Let's see what we have here. Parthenocissus, some North American wild grapes, which nah, I don't consider the fruit really edible. They have oxalate crystals, but um, the spring greens can be edible and also in such a mild weather, in a survival situation, I would try to tap the plant. Grapevines are a very good producer of clean water and sugar juice. So I would not go for the fruit. I would rather go for the stem and get clean water and nice, sweet, nice, fast calories. Ah, by the way, well, mild winter doesn't just mean fruit. Here we have again the ornamental quince. It also means flowers. Here an albino form of the ornamental quince flowering. And this is not an exception. The whole garden was flowering, very protected between the buildings. So I guess all the plants start, all the quinces started flowering. So this is Pinus nigra. We're gonna move this. Well, if you are into alleged super fruit, hmm, the goji berries are still fruiting in January. This is not one of the modern really tasty varieties. It's a bit bitter, but the bitter ones are supposed to be just as healthy as the modern sweet ones. And if you're into real super fruit, here is a staple of autumn and winter foraging in Europe, rose hips. Rose hips of many different species. Look at that. I mean, okay, we have here a very diverse park on campus, so lots of different rose hips. They are all edible from the tiniest ones to the giant to the giant rosa rugosa which because of because of two years of drought is just a third of its normal size those rose hips mm, are very tasty in some species they contain more vitamin c than such famous fruits like acerola, and I think about 60 times more vitamin C than, or was it 100 times more vitamin C or 200 times, an immense amount more vitamin C than lemons or apples. Well, here, lots and lots of different rose hips. You basically cannot go wrong with rose hips. A lot of them will taste boring, but whatever. Honey locust. If you get it in the perfect state in a perfect condition, the pulp inside will indeed taste like honey. But it says when it's too old, it's getting disgusting. Mm, still quite good in January. The flavor always reminds me a little bit of glue. But yeah, it's still sweet and nice, the honey locust. And 
Those fruits are actually small. The normal size is about twice that big. And a couple hundred of those things, if you suck a little bit on each one and none of them is disgusting, you can actually get a lot of sugar and nutrients out of them. One of my favorite fruit, the German Medlar, Mespilus Germanica, or Germanica, here it is. This one should be good to eat, those are already too old. Let's see, uh, no, this is also already too old. They should be brown and soft, but in this one I can already see a bit of mold. And also the smell is not so good. Well, this one is not really ready yet, it's still too hard. And the other ones are too old, but basically January is still a time when you can find medlars. Well, fix. The winter fix, the third generation in Germany, usually is good for nothing. Well, those are soft enough to chew them. <coughs> they have a really nice thick flavor, but no trace of sweetness. So I would consider them as a survival food. They will give you some nutrients and they will give you something to chew on and they are not unpleasant. So yeah. They are also not pleasant, they are just nothing special, but definitely edible, so a survival food. Or if you want to do some sort of preserves, just add a lot of sugar. Those have the thick te uh, texture and the thick flavor. Just don't take moldy ones like those. Hmm. Stinging nettles. Few people actually know that stinging nettles have tiny edible nuts. And each nettle has thousands of them. They are very tasty and very nutritional. And as you can see, a lot of the nettles have so far survived the winter. I did not find any with ready to harvest nuts. In this one, they are already, the inflorescences are a little bit dried up. But if you find some with fresh greens, you just need to boil them or crush the stingers and you can eat them. And if there are unripe fruit on them, just eat them together with the fruit, you'll get more nutrients and especially more fat per gram than just from the greens. Just I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rely just on the fruit in January. I will take them as an added bonus. Hibiscus syriaca, we used to eat the fruit as children. Those are already too far gone. I don't know. The fruit are definitely not edible. The seeds which are coming out don't look so nice. I just collected it to show it to you, but I guess January is too late for Hibiscus Syriaca. Acorns. Here we have... Uh, let's see where is the cap. Quercus rubra, one of the acorns used by the Native Americans for flower. And I'm not absolutely sure, but I think that here... Uh, let me... That here we have some quite not well developed form of Quercus ceris, a species used for flour and bread production in parts of the Balkan Peninsula in Europe thousands or hundreds of years ago. Well, what else do we have? Kiwi. This kiwi, it's January. And this kiwi, not only that it's not rotten, it's not even ripe enough. This year I would let it a couple more weeks until I would consider this truly edible. So, <laughs> yeah, kiwi originates from an area which is in China, which is warmer than Germany. So it needs quite a long time to ripen. And this kiwi in January is still not ripe. Okay, the stinky ginkgo fruit, a staple of East Asian cuisine, especially the seeds, but they also eat the fruit. I hate the fruit. I don't like them. One of the few fruits which are too smelly and too disgusting for me. Here we have two North American species of Symphoricarpus. Symphoricarpus albus. And somewhere here should be Symphoricarpus rivularis. Here it is. For boats, there are records that they eat, have been eaten by people. There are records of them being foraged, but... Nah, they taste too bitter and are also toxic and can give you a lot of trouble. So for me, they are not even a survival food. Hmm. Here, this big cotoneaster, Ebingay, I think it is. <clears throat> Usually, several kilograms or even several dozen 
kilograms of this stuff will persist on the tree well into spring. But it's so horribly bitter, I think if you want to eat it, you should cook it or try some other stuff to make it less bitter because it's so horribly bitter, I don't like it. A contraster species which is not bitter but quite nice, but which I hmm, might have already lost. Well, right now I cannot find the taste. Ah, here it is. Cotoneaster horizontalis. It tastes basically like a bland apple or like a hawthorn. It also persists well into spring in normal winters. Well, it's not a bad fruit. It's also not a good fruit. It's good enough for winter or spring foraging, but the seeds, uh, the fruit are single. This year, I, I took some with just a few fruit, but sometimes they are hanging in cluster sometimes there are many hundreds of them hanging on one branch you can collect dozens of kilograms of this with a little effort but it's gonna taste horrible this year is not gonna taste horrible it's gonna taste bland which is good enough as a survival food or for winter foraging but you have to collect a little fruit one by one it's a lot of effort here is some intermediate looking Cotoneaster, which I haven't tried. It could be a hybrid of those two or a hybrid of others, so a different species. Well, let's try it. Hmm. Hmm. A trace of bitterness, so yeah, this could be interesting for foraging. Not too bitter. I guess cooking it might destroy the bitterness. And still enough foods to, uh, in, enough fruits to get some decent amount together. Well, what about walnuts, a staple of fruit foraging throughout Europe? Well, the problem is that with the Persian walnut, Juglans regia, you have a window of about, in rainy weather, less than three days. Actually, in rainy weather, you don't have a window at all. In rainy weather, the nuts get spoiled. In dry weather, the window for harvesting can be a couple of weeks. But basically, every time it rains, the fruit on the ground are spoiled, only only the fruit which hang on the tree, the seeds will dry up enough. So basically this stuff, foraging for it in January, you will find, you will find intact seeds in some of those. <clears throat> but when the seed has already started germinating, it's one of the most disgusting things you can imagine. This mouth-watering, bitter and astringent combination with just, I tried it once and I puked afterwards. <laughs> and I... There are very few times where I have puked from fruit. But if you want walnuts in winter or spring or even early summer sometimes, you can stick to the North American or Asian species. This is Juglans manchurica or catayensis. If you look at the Persian walnut, there is a hole here and through this hole water gets into the into the uh, into the seed. Well, if you look at Juglans manjurica, this hole doesn't go all the way in, so the seed gets protected. So those will be still perfectly fine. And they can be much bigger. They can be five to seven times bigger than those little, little seeds. And you can harvest them well into July. Last year, I harvested them well into July, and in August, the new ones were already ripe. So basically, no month without Juglans Manchurica in Germany. Let's see what else do we have. Well, if you are fed up of walnuts in winter, you can still get some hazelnuts. This is Corulus colurna from the Balkans, the tree hazelnut, the hazelnut which, uh, come on, this is not part of, the hazelnut which grows on trees and has very particularly very crazy looking fruit. That's what the hard shells look like. That's where some squirrels or rats ate the seeds. And this, at least the ones on the tree, I'm pretty sure they are still good in January. Well, you can imagine how mild the winter was from the fact that a lot of the, a lot of the Solanum species survived. Let's see what we have here. This is a... Solanum nigrum, 
And it seems to be Zolanum nigrum subspecies nigrum. Here's Zolanum nigrum subspecies schultesi, the hairy one. Here another different looking Zolanum nigrum. Zolanum nigrum is an incredibly diverse species. So here we have something which looks like typical Solanum luteum. Very rare around here. Solanum luteum nowadays is called Solanum villosum, subspecies villosum. And here we have something which I would, I did consider Solanum villosum, subspecies villosum for over 25 years. Now I think it might be some intermediate thing between the subspecies villosum and the subspecies alatum. But 99% of all populations in the Heidelberg area of Solanum villosum look like this intermediate between villosum and talatum. Well, all those, all those Solanum fruits, they are quite tasty. Mm, nice. A mixture of gooseberry and kiwi. Not as sweet as they were in August. They taste like the not 100% ripe ones in August, but they still taste good in January. No reason to complain. Let's see what we have here. Here we have some Puracanta coccinea. Well, I, I kind of, I don't know what I did. Usually there were like 10 times more berries on this little, little branch. Puracanta is quite bland, but you can harvest giant amounts of the fruit well into spring, so they can be a staple of winter foraging. Here, another tasty thing which most people would call a nut. This is an almond, or actually more probably a peach almond. True almonds are very rare in Germany, not because they don't grow here. This part of Germany was a big exporter of almonds 100, 200 years ago. But because the peach almond is more beautiful, so everybody grows the peach element instead of the normal element, and most of those will still be good in January. Beauty berry from North America. Well, in Europe it's almost unknown as an edible fruit, but in some parts of North America it's good for jelly and other preserves. Hawthorn. As you can see, a lot of the fruit, they look quite half rotten and half dried up. This is not because of the winter. This is because we had the second year of drought stress. So the plants actually, they struggle to produce good fruit. So Hawthorn, if you find one from a moist location, the fruit will look a lot better. This was from a dry location, so most of them don't look very good. Here another Hawthorn, Crategus cruscali. This one is probably Crategus oxyacanta, a native species.